In the beginning days, there was nothing here but water, nothing but a great ocean, and all creatures that lived, lived in the world above. Beyond this polished blue stone, the sky vault that curves from horizon to horizon. But it was getting crowded in the upper world, and Creator said, I will build a middle world a world that exists in the balance between the upper world, a world of per perfect order, and the lower world, a world of complete chaos. And all of the animals that lived in Galant Lati, the upper world, were happy to hear this and they waited. Every day a different bird would fly, leave the world above and come down and fly in all four directions across the face of the water. And one by one they would say, there is no place here to build a home. And finally, the little shiny-backed water beetle, the little water beetle, flew down from the world above, swam all the way to the bottom of the sea, and there was earth. And so that little water beetle scooped up a handful of mud and brought it back and set it floating on top of the water. And they say that from that tiny handful of mud that water beetle carried that day, it stretched and it grew until it became this continent that we walk upon. But it was still soft, soft mud like the ocean floor. So once again, the birds began to fly. Every day, a different bird would come down and fly in all four directions across the earth. And one by one, they would return to say, no, it's still too soft. And when it was buzzards turn to fly, and buzzard had come down and found nothing but soft mud, he grew angry and impatient. He began flying very close to the earth, making a wind with his wings. He dried the land as he flew. And they say that when he reached Cherokee country, he was tired. He flew too close to the earth. And everywhere his wings struck the ground, a valley was carved. And where his wings rose, tall mountains grew. And everyone watching from the world above was afraid he would make the whole world mountains, so they called him home. But if you have been to the homeland of the Cherokee people, the Smoky Mountains, you've seen the beauty that Buzzard created there on that day. And they say that at that time, all creatures came down from the upper world to make this middle world a home. And it is said that Creator, Une Tlana, Creator, gave everyone the same original instruction. He said, I have hung this world from the four corners of the sky with four silver cords. Live in balance on this earth, or someday those cords may snap and this land will sink back beneath the sea. Now they say that there were many things that had to be done to make this world a home. First, they went to Grandmother Sun. Grandmother Sun lives beyond the sky vault and they said to her, they said, Grandmother, we need your light and warmth in this middle world. And so she agreed that she would come to the edge of the sky and she would walk a path through the heavens. But the very first day, the Adawahi, the wise ones, they met her there at the edge of the sky. They boosted her one hand span into the heavens, but that was much too close. The land was scorched, the mountain streams boiled, and that little crawfish that lives in those streams turned that bright red color. Do you know, for a long time, traditional Cherokee people wouldn't eat crawdads. They said, he was cooked so long ago, his meat is probably bad by now. I live on a beautiful little creek in Cherokee County, just north of Tahlequah, and I know that we have gotten over that because all the Cherokee people I know love to come to my house on the creek and go, go crawdadding. Sometimes they may take home as much as a five-gallon barrel of them. Same thing the next day. 
the Adawa, he boosted her another handspan, and then another, and then another, until finally, on the seventh day, she found the path that she follows through the heavens. Now, her brother, we call him Uncle Moon, he agreed to bring his soft and gentle light to the evening sky. I see some of you looking at me funny. You've been listening to some of those plains people, haven't you? They'll tell you the sun is a man, the moon is a woman. We Cherokee people are smarter than that. The sun is all powerful, makes all life possible. Of course she is a woman. The moon is good looking, doesn't do much. <laughs> of course he is a man. Now with the grandmother's sun in the heavens by day and Uncle Moon smiling at night, the world was still a cold and dark place because we had no fire. And Thunder, who lives in the west, controls the wind and the rain and the lightning. Thunder knew that fire would make the lives of the people much better. And so he sent lightning to strike a hollow tree on an island in the middle of a great lake. And the first fire in the middle world was kindled there. And the smoke rose into the heavens. And all the animal people gathered on the shores of that lake and a great council was held. Everyone wanted to be the one to go and bring that fire back to the people. And after a lot of talk, everyone said, the wisest, the wisest one should bring the fire. And that was Grandmother Owl. She had no trouble reaching the island. She flew across. But do you know, as wise as she was, she had no experience with the nature of fire. She flew just as she always did, straight to the top of that tree and perched there and looked down. Just as a gust of smoke and ash blew up through that hollow tree as though it were a chimney, and the smoke burned Grandmother Owl's eyes, and the ashes made great white rings on her face. And in her pain, she returned without the fire. And you will know that owl because even today she wears those white rings. And the people said, well, that didn't work. And so they said the strongest, the strongest should go. And that was bare. Now, Bear had no trouble reaching the island. Bears are very good swimmers. And he had learned from Grandmother Owl. He did not climb to the top of the tree. He circled the base. Have you ever seen a big, dead, hollow tree that has a great split in it where you can climb inside? Bear found that place. And so he squeezed himself into the tree where the fire was burning bright and hot, and the air was full of smoke and ash, and Bear began to cough and choke. And before he could back out of that tree, he had been burned black from the tip of his nose to the tip of his tail. And the bear in the Smoky Mountains is black to this day. Sometimes you see him walking along upright like a two-legged, and then he gives these funny rumbling little coughs. He's still trying to clear all that smoke and ash out of his lungs. And so the people said, well, that didn't work. And so they began to talk some more. Finally, they said, the swiftest, the swiftest among us should go. Someone who can move so fast that they can dart in and get that fire and come right back out before they can get hurt. And they decided that the swiftest was the little blue racer snake. Now, little blue racer snake, he swam across to the island. He went straight to the split in the tree, and he dashed inside. But the fire had been burning for so long that now there was a deep bed of hot coals there. And the poor little snake began to twist and turn and dodge and dart. And by the time he came back out, he was not the little blue racer snake anymore. He was the little black racer snake. And he swam back without the fire. And the people said, well, that didn't work. And so they began to talk some more. And finally they said, 
the handsomest, the best looking among us. Let the prettiest one go. Maybe if the prettiest one goes, the fire will be so dazzled that that one can grab a piece of that fire and come right back out. And the prettiest animal in the beginning days of the world was the rainbow crow. The rainbow crow had all the colors of the light dancing and shimmering in his feathers. Every time he turned or flew or circled and the light shone, a different color would appear. And the rainbow crow was very proud of his good looks. He said, I will fly over there. That fire will be so dazzled by my good looks. I can snatch a piece of that fire and come back while the fire is looking at me. So Rainbow Crow flew over. He dove straight down through the top of that tree. But when he came out the bottom, he had flown directly through the fire. And no longer did all the colors of the rainbow shimmer from his feathers. The crow that we see today is as black as the black bear and the black snake. So when Rainbow Crow got back, everyone said, well, that didn't work. And they started talking some more. And they heard one tiny little voice speaking up. It was the little water spider, the one that does that dance like this on top of the creeks and the rivers. Water Spider said, let me go, let me try. And everyone started laughing and laughing. You are too little. What can you do that owl and bear and the racer snake and the rainbow crow, all of them have tried, all of them have failed. What makes you think you could do better. And Bear, when he saw how much the words of the others had hurt Little Water Spider's feelings, he stood up, he said, she is small, but her heart is big. Let her go. And so the people agreed that the little water spider should try to bring the fire. Little water spider, she had no trouble reaching the island. She danced across. And she didn't rush in the way the others had done. She sat down outside that tree. She began to spin her web thread around and around and around until she had made a little bowl she took mud from the shore of the lake and she lined the inside of that bowl and she tied it on her back. And reaching in, she took one tiny coal of fire and she placed it in her bowl and she danced back to the people. And you know they say from that tiny coal of fire that Grandmother Spider carried on that day were all seven sacred fires of the Cherokee people lit. Now, sacred fire was very important. It burned in the townhouses of the seven Cherokee peace or refuge towns, tended at all times, never allowed to go out. Every year around Green Corn Dance time, the council hearth would be swept clean and a new fire would be laid, but it was lit with coals from the sacred fire of the year before. And in that way, that living fire was handed down from one generation to the next. And they say that in that time of great trouble, in that time when 16,000 Cherokee people were rounded up at gunpoint and forced all the way from their Smoky Mountain homeland to Oklahoma, where we are now. 
there were those who carried coals of that sacred fire with them. They burn now at the ceremonial grounds in the Cookson Hills. And when you look at that little spider, look at her back. The white bowl she carried left a mark, a white circle on her back. And they say that when the coal of fire was taken from that bowl, the mud that she had lined that bowl with, it had turned hard. And that's how Cherokee women made pottery, was learning from that little grandmother spider. And you can see that image of little grandmother spider now, Cherokee artists, Cherokee potters, Cherokee silversmiths. They love to make the image of the little water spider with the circle on her back because it teaches us something very important. We're taught to remember that one of the greatest gifts of light and warmth, our living sacred fire, came to the Cherokees, not from the biggest, the strongest, the wisest, the fastest, or even the best looking, but from one of the smallest and gentlest of our animal brothers and sisters, Wado.